go to prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for letting us see another real Sabbath. We come to you knowing that you're the door to the kingdom of God, Jesus. We call upon your name. So I was looking through these prayer requests. God, you told us to pray one for another. We're grateful to you. We give you thanks. We are privileged to be here in this tent house of God. God, we ask you to look upon every solitary person that's here. See their needs in their lives and their homes. We know, God, that you are a good God. And you so love the world that 2,000 years ago, you so love the world that you gave and sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, to give His life, to die upon the cross for our sins, and to take those lashes and fertiles in His body for our healing, and shed the blood out of His side, and probably blood out of those lashes take away our sins and I thank you God I wouldn't be here today God if it wasn't for you so love the world all in the name of Jesus we ask for these needs to be met God we ask that you smile upon everyone's needs we know that if if any two of us agree if I agree with these needs and those that fill out these requests, believe and I agree with them somewhere out there speedily and quickly, I pray that all of these needs be met. God, we've had so many testimonies from everywhere. We're giving you thanks and beholding you as the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world and we pray for these needs if you've got a special need let it be known by the raising up of your hand opening your heart to the Lord and believe in your heart as we pray Father we thank you God we ask you through the name of your son Jesus that are of a lifted hand that you bless them and answer their prayers, giving you all thanks. We behold in you that you said if any two of us, of two or three of us, are gathered together in the name of the Lord, that it should be done. We agree. We behold you giving you thanks that you are the true God. Lift your hands up and praise Him. Lift your hands up and praise Him and thank Him for being an answer to your prayer. Go over and take somebody's hand and tell them somebody is going to get a miracle tonight. Somebody's going to be healed. Praise God. Somebody's going to get a miracle. I appreciate the Lord. You know, you know, people are going to, that brother's talking about people talking about, they're going to talk about you if you do, and they're going to talk about you if you don't. I don't pay that no attention. You know, I've uh, got thousands of requests coming in from all over the nation. I mean, tens of thousands of them telling them to be encouraged, that they're praying. Or well, maybe two or three old critics out there. Well, who cares? Yeah. Jesus, you know, was crucified with two thieves on the cross. Nobody bore reproach more than he did. But thank God he did. What would we be today if Jesus hadn't 
gave his life on Calvary's cross for our sins. As far as the world was concerned at that time, he was a criminal. But that didn't null a bit of it. Thank God. That was the worst kind of a, a death sentence you could get in his time. That was like being put to death in an electric chair. Only being on an electric chair was quicker. You know, they'd have to take them down before sundown and they come to the first thief and broke his legs where he'd die quicker. The other thief and then went over to Jesus and just before they would have broke Jesus' leg, the Bible said he gave his up the ghost, gave his spirit for your sins and my sins. After all the miracles he had in three and a half years, for the Jews to this day, it's handed down to their ancestors that Jesus is no more than a thief on a cross. But thank God he died. He'd he done it for me. I said he died for me and he died for you. Shed his blood. The Bible said, if you suffer with him, you'll reign with him. One thing about it, I learned a long time ago, as an old preacher told me when I started out, said, I want to give you some good advice. Said, they're going to talk about you if you do. They're going to talk about you if you don't. Said, get out there and give them something to talk about. Praise God. <laughs> Glory. I just appreciate him. I want to give you a, a moment here if you can help us in the finances. All your offerings, it's give them a read of scripture. I ain't going to talk to you long. I felt this evening as I was reaching out to the Lord in, in prayer. Uh in prayer, I'm gonna need my chair for God to hear y'all. Uh, in prayer to the Lord, that I felt like that somebody is, is going to get a miracle from the Lord. I appreciate it. As I appreciate it, God is a, is a miracle God. Thank you, Jesus. He is a miracle God. And if you'll have a little bit of faith, it don't take a whole lot. Somebody wrote that song, just a little bit of faith. It don't take a whole lot. Just use what you got. And Jesus, He didn't come to condemn the world or to judge the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Well, if we went but what people well nothing would happen I just appreciate the Lord thank you Jesus but about a month before I broke this leg I was and, and I, at the time I was had been, I was in a fast from uh, January uh, from August the 31st and this was December the 21st, that morning I was praying for God. And I'm talking about when, when I fast, I fast. I don't nibble. And I was praying that morning. I said, God, I, I just want to preach your gospel and carry your word. You know, we've preached over 200 countries in the world and preached to more people face to face than any man ever lived because I've given my whole life, more than 50 years of my life for that purpose. And I told God, I said, God, I preach this gospel. You know, when I was 11 years old, I'd been in a wheelchair for 
six years and, and I was thinking about how God healed me when I was 11 years old weighed 32 pounds stayed in the hospital six years and of course later I gave my heart to God and I told the Lord I said God I'll preach this gospel if I have to preach it from a wheelchair you know and you have to be careful sometimes how you pray because God will allow you to be tested you know and lo and behold <laughs> for the day is out for midnight I was in a wheelchair <laughs> fell and broke my leg you know anybody could do that fell out the door Lord have mercy the times I fell out the door and didn't even get skin anybody ever fell out the door I fell out of barn loft and didn't get hurt but, but you know you have to be careful sometimes what you say to God you know, he'll, he'll uh, see what you do. But you know one thing about it, when the Bible said when God's tried you, look at Job, he was a perfect man. In all of his ways. Richest man of the East, and the most perfect man. Man without sin. And Job prayed, Though God slay me, I'll trust him. You know, God put him through the fire. And his period of time was about, according to history, about from 11 to 13 months that he went through that fire. But you know what? When he got through that, Bible said he was more richer than he ever been. He got put in the Bible for a lot of I never get in the Bible and you never get in the Bible. I mean just think about it. What God can put you through, you know, uh, he said when God's tried me. Though he slay me, I'll trust him. When he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You know, God can't try some people. And that's why it's always, Mama always told me, said, son, no matter what happens to other people, said, don't ever speak bad about somebody else. Hardest thing I ever do is turn my other cheek. It took me the fourth time to walk away. Three times I tried it and after that second slap I had me one more good fight. <laughs> At three times. But I, I didn't help me a bit. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> but that fourth time thank God. God gave me grace and and something other that I didn't have him other three times and walked away. That guy got saved and made a preacher. I don't know what them other three made, but <laughs> he made a preacher and had a great ministry. Thank the Lord. And he said he was tested. See if it could be done because he didn't know, you know, God's good. We're going to give you a chance here to help us Anything you help us up. Uh, you ought to bless you. And I tell you that uh, that someone we prayed for and he went back and it was a critical and, and uh, cancer in the worst stages and couldn't find nothing. Just, you know, uh, people call us here and there and call somebody that knows me tell them to let me know that you know God's God not that I've done anything 
but a man called Jesus one day came to our house not too far from here I was thinking about it today just about 10 miles south of Pell City, Alabama going straight south got off the Coosie River down there and a shotgun house where my mama lived and ever who was home at the time while she's in the backfield picking cotton she that morning she had changed the galls and on the leg and washed it early came back at dinner after they eat dinner I had my brother older me he was just th stayed in, and they're around there working in the garden and so forth and she changed the bandages everything after dinner had to do it three or four times a day that leg was rotten the hang leg and somewhere about three o'clock I don't know exactly the time we didn't have alarm clock or clock but a man stood at the foot of my bed with eyes was like the bluest of the sky can get stood there he said I'm Jesus come to hear you he spoke to me three times get out of that hospital bed and lay my crutches down and walk and sort of scramble over to the edge of it and and got a hold of the bedpost like this facing him and he said walk again looked at him again the third time and said walk and something came all over me and this leg fell out and was made whole nothing but a hang leg rotten no bone but one let them amputate they want to amputate it give me a month to live and to live four but in a New York minute I was running all over that house my brother heard it and saw me and through that window run across that cotton peel hollered mom as loud as he could come to the house David's walking she got in there and she took that old bonnet and wiped that old red mud off her face old red dust that pushed her pink on that red land and first thing she done she took that apron and done that and took that old bunny off and lifted her hands and I never forget it she said Jesus I never doubted you one time told me later she said son I made up my mind rather than amputate your leg that I rather had your funeral That's why I'm here today. You know, Merle Haggard said his mama tried to raise him right, but he refused. My mama, boy, she said, told me, said, you are going to serve the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't he real? Thank you, Jesus. I want to read this little scripture here because I feel there's some very needed healings if you've got any sin in your life just ask them to uh, wash them away forgive you this is Matthew's 935 Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom 
healing every sickness and every disease. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they found they were, were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Thank you, Lord. Over here in the fourth chapter, this is after when he first begun. And verse 24, his fame went throughout all Syria. They brought to him all sick people that were taken with divers of different diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatics and those that had posse and he healed them. Then Peter wrote about him and said by his stripes ye or you were healed. My mom there was a church of God about a mile or so from where we lived there. South of Pell City down there, the little, nothing but a store, country store down at the foot of the hill. There was a church of God down there. And Mama would, uh, I don't think she ever went, but she'd send prayer requests down there. And then pray for me. After the Lord appeared to me and him and I started I went worldwide and fifty six and in ten years it preached in over forty something countries. The pastor that 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 she used to send somebody down there to pray for me. Still passing that church. He was on up in there. Probably 80 or 90 years old. He wanted me to come and and hold revival. There at his church. And I tell you and he told me all about it. How their, their church. That was where mama sent to, to Get prayer. Prayer works. Amen. You know, the Bible said men ought to always pray. Not faint. I don't know exactly what all that means. I don't think it means to pass out. But I believe it means to never give up. God wants you healed. If God don't want you healed, He don't want you saved. Jesus never... Open blind eyes, never healed a cripple or a lame or cleansed a leprosy. That he didn't turn around to him and said, Go and sin no more. Your sins is forgiven. You can't get healed without getting saved. But you can get saved without getting healed. It's part of of the crucifixion. It's part of the sacrifice. It's part of what Jesus bore. The Bible said he bore our grief. Look that up. That grief is your sickness, your pain. Look it up yourself. He bore that. And these preachers that's not call himself Pentecost ain't offering prayer and getting in there teaching you there's more than just going to Sunday school. There's more than just paying your tithes. Jesus has bore my reproach. Bible said he bore our reproach. Man, we're just a bunch of nothings. Until he bore that for us. If you got a condition in your body that you've lived with for years, you're living beneath your privilege. I 
I said, you're living ab above your privilege. You know, when Jesus said he bore our grief, I experienced that on the 21st of December, this past December. You know, I told God that morning in early prayer, I was praying about eight or nine, and I was knew that this was going to be a great year, a tried year. And I, in my prayer, I said, God, I'll preach this gospel. If you, you don't know what the preachers are, are, are quitting. I mean, they're not many what we used to call when I got healed and then after when I started in 60, 56 in the, in the healing ministry after staying in an old barn 31 days and fasting and drunk nothing but well water two weeks in citywide meetings and 1961 ordered the biggest tent in the world took them to 1964 there's a fellow smith had the biggest tent building tents for preachers Chattanooga Tennessee built me a tent bigger than this uh, wouldn't be bigger if all of it was up and I told him I, I didn't have no money went up there and I talked to him I said Mr. Smith if you help me get a tent I'll pay you so much a month. He looked at me, he said, Preacher, he said, last year I like to went broke because preachers all over this country I built tent for last and they, they didn't pay me. Something come over me like I was illuminated. I looked at him, I said, Mr. Smith, if you will be on me if you'll build me a tent, let me pay it out for my revivals. I said, one day you'll build the biggest tent that ever been built in the world for me. And it won't be long. Two years later, he started building the biggest tent that's ever been built anywhere in the world. Took him two or three years to build that thing. Cost into the multiplied thousands of dollars. Bought it down in at Atlanta, Georgia, and I put six, uh, 18,000 chairs on it, and it was packed out on opening night. That's how hungry people was in America. Amen. Glory. But you know, this Jesus is still the same Jesus. It ain't God's lost his power, and it ain't that Jesus has lost his authority. Is that the preachers is not preaching the same gospel that old Robert started out with? The A. A. Allen locked himself in a had his wife to lock him in a closet days and weeks on his knees, and the closet was in the kitchen. where he could smell her cooking for the kids. He said at the time, the devil tried to get him to come out there and eat. He got right back there on his knees. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you don't have them kind of preachers no more. But it ain't because we don't have the same God. Amen. It ain't because we don't have the same Savior. People want to blame the church of Jesus Christ for them being sick. It ain't the church of Jesus Christ, which is the body of Christ's church. It's to these preachers. Won't fast. And won't pray. The day I broke my leg, I'd been, and eat nothing. I don't, I know some of y'all was in, uh, 
Memphis, the minister's meeting on the 31st of uh, August is when I closed that minister meeting. And I started fasting that day. I'd been fasting that meeting started for seven days and Sister Terrell had been women and always when I was in Memphis usually we'd go over to a special restaurant and we'd get to eat together. And I broke that fast after seven days during that Memphis meeting. I was for seven days on Tuesday. I said, oh, I'm on, uh, you've been good to me. I'm going to play husband and wife with you right here. We, but that last day of that meeting, God put that fast back on me. I, I'd eat seven days. Thank the Lord. I want you to know that Ray, you believe it or not, I didn't eat a bite till December the 21st when I fell and broke this leg. I didn't eat a bite since August the 30th. And I'm not talking about fooling around nibbling either. I fell out the door on December the 21st sideways and broke that leg all to pieces. And she heard me hollering. And Brother Dixon, he was there. And Brother, but not right there. They'd gone to town. Some, I don't know how. But she found me that I'd lost all my blood. She heard me, finally heard me. And I was dead 22 minutes, something like that. But for some reason, God wanted me here. Ray, you like me or don't, God wanted me here. I ain't ever heard nobody but one other person dead 22 minutes. Fact about it, if you're dead that long, uh, if you do come back, you'll be had something wrong you the rest of your life. Your brain won't be right. You know. So whether you don't like it or don't what you want to, God, the best is ahead. The greatest of ahead. Jesus ain't coming back in a dead revival. He's not coming back that without a church. All these denominations may not get ready, but when Jesus is coming back, He's coming back for the dead in Christ first to be resurrected. But He's he going he to have a people. It's called the real church. It's going to be without spot. And it ain't going to be buildings. It ain't going to be denominations. It ain't going to be your congregation. It's going to be the people in your congregation that strive to enter the straight gate. That striving to live free from sin. And to take up the cross. And we got a generation that just goes ahead and sin. I've had a preacher said, I just go ahead and sin and then repent. Well, one of these days you're going to repent and it's going to be too late. You better, not that you ain't supposed to repent. I ask every day, God, to search my heart. But I don't get out here and practice sin. I keep looking at this here. I don't know y'all got this through mail or not. I think they redone it. This was one of the greatest miracles nearly in my life. It's called the woman in change. Didn't y'all get that? Uh, they, they redone it, I think, what, last year? And uh, I tell you, this lady here was tied to where you see her there and been there since she's 15 and that's uh, probably 35, 40 years there. We heard about her. We went over there and she lit, slept in a barn chained to a metal pole with chains. And and she jumped at you like a mad dog. A brother from up in Oklahoma that was women at meeting and I had him to get out there in front where she draw his attention because she jumped in like a mad dog jumping. 
of that chain. Oh, I could slip up behind her and slap my hands on her head are full of dung and filth. And the moment I put my hands on her head, she come down, he grabbed her. And, and what we call me growing up in a New York minute, this woman was free. <laughs> and that's a change there. They redone that last year. And they, I tell you, that's a change she was, and she'd been out preaching the gospel. Thank God. I heard she's doing right now maybe greater works than a lot of folks. I mean, you know, people think, God, you got to go through all these here uh, schools and you got to do all this here denominational stuff. God said, these signs will follow them that believe. All you got to do is start acting your faith. If you're a preacher, start. Bible said these signs will follow them that believe. So if the signs ain't following, it's a good sign that you're not believing. You start believing if you are. God told me in these last days that just the, the, the church members... He didn't tell me this yesterday neither. He told me when I was in one of the biggest and the greatest moves of my life. He still are. Won't you know that if it wasn't for this uh, leg, Brother Dave wouldn't be here. He'd be over here sitting in African meetings. I just I ain't going over like this. You know, Mexico. They, they told me they done, it's all over Mexico. Mexico wants me anyhow. They said, they want me down. They said, if you have to bring him in in an ambulance. <laughs> we need him. <laughs> Glory. See, everybody ain't like some of y'all. <laughs> they don't care if I was one-armed and have I have sense. If I could pray the prayer of faith, they want it. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory. People ain't looking for beauty. People ain't looking for all this here modern church stuff. They looking for rugged men yeah. of dying faith, rugged men, praise God, to lift up Jesus. When Jesus said, if I be lifted up, the real Jesus, there's something about him that's like lodestone. Yeah. It draws people to him. People ain't drawn to me. It's that Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The greatest that the world's ever. Jesus ain't coming back. Oh, this bunch of claim they fixed me raptured out. He's coming back for a church without a spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. I've done a study on that. It's going to be a people that, that's not sick. It's going to be a people that's healed. He ain't coming back for a sick bride. The bride of Christ. God told me a long time ago when Jesus come, God's going to heal the bride of Christ. The Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world by His stripes, He took away the sickness of the world. And all you got to do it's quit looking for a mountain of faith. Dig around and see if you can't find a turnip seed. A mustard seed. Uh, ain't mustard seed a little smaller than a turnip? It is a little smaller than the kind of mustard mama used to grow. It barely is recognized by the natural eye. I can. Because I still got my same eyes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory of the day. You know, me and sister, we have so much good time, you know. And I was showing her something. And I was, she said, let me, let, me, let me get my glasses. She, she got 20, 20 hours, but she still has to have a little help sometime. <laughs> Glory. But the Lord had just been good to me because Mama gave me to Him and Jesus bought you. Did you know Jesus bought you? Did you know Jesus paid a price for you? As I sang that song, Jesus lived upon this earth.
paid a price nobody paid. Amen. I got a gold record for most of them songs. And whether you believe it or not, I've been invited lately up yonder to the most popular country music folks and to sing gospel songs. You know, but I haven't done it yet. I don't know. I may do it some of these times. If you do see me on TV, let you talk about me. <laughs> I wouldn't care. But they said I can come in there and sing. And I got people right now. Just, just last week said, anytime you want to go up there, just let me know. We'll we get you right in there. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I don't, I don't want people to think I've done gone country. But I tell you, in these last days, they ain't going to be mad or not. Let me tell you something. God's going to have a church that, that God's going to chop his long tongues off and they're going to shut their mouths and, and the church is going to look up to one another. Amen. Jesus said, by my stripes you were. Jesus said, I suffer without the gates that I might sanctify the people of my own blood. Yes. Glory. Ain't that right? Suffer that the gates that I might sanctify the people with my own blood. You know, people forgot to suffer of Christ. People have forgot that he nailed your sins to the tree. People have forgotten that he turned his back to the smiters for my healing and your healing. And it's real. I said, is these been, they're real? Okay. We're going to pray a little prayer here. I'm going to get up on this thing here. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm not wearing this thing because I have to. I just don't want to re-broke that leg. The legs is all right, but I wanted to, uh, I was advised by the doctors to let it become strong. God uh, Ray and North, God put that leg to, back together after it broke, slapped in two, and been up here. Me and the Lord both set that leg before the doctors done it. Then they're bleeding to death. Thank you, Jesus, for calling. I've been crippled before, and I just thank the Lord. And I'll tell you one thing when I came in from the hospital that day, I stayed up there six days, and I got the beautiful and wonderful little woman. It brought me in the house and she said, well, I got you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and smile. <laughs> oh, glory. I got you now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But not happy, but, you know, just uh, going to get to be with her more. And I tell you, it's worth it. But I had missed many services and missed, I think, seven or eight days. But God is good. Be careful how you make promises to God. He might test you one of these days. When you say, Lord, I'll do anything for you, you need to be careful. That morning I was, had been fasting since August the 31st. I started, and I'd, before that ministry meeting, I'd fasted seven days or so, and, and that's the only time that Sister Terrell and I Sometimes get to eat together at that ministering meeting, and so I broke it for seven days of that meeting and started back that Saturday. Stopped at st soft grass coming back through Dallas, and she ate and lay, and I was going to eat. Sat at the table, the Lord said, Start your fast back today. That was on 31st, about f five or six o'clock in the evening of August, and I didn't eat no more till they woke up with a plate. In the hospital, told me I was going to have to eat, get some strength in me. But thank the Lord, I appreciate the Lord. I just appreciate Him. And I got 11 days back started again. And I tell you, the Lord spoke to me and said, You're just taking up where you left off. Thank God. He's a good God. He can put a bone in my leg, a porcelain bone at that. You know, while I was in the hospital, they found out that when I was healed, of course, they, 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 they still don't know for sure, that, that 
I don't think altogether believe me that I ain't got a regular bone that leg that Jesus healed when I was 11 years old. I got a porcelain bone in there that Jesus put in that bone that day. And they just started using that. They discovered seven years ago last year, the medical world, that's the only porcelain's the only thing that will, will blend into another bone and grow that another bone can grow to. And them doctors still don't believe me that that happened when I was 11 years old. Because the doctor didn't even know about it then. But God did. Yes, he did. I said, God did. Ain't that something? And I've never known that that, that kind of miracle. And that, you know what that done to me? That made my testimony, whether you believe it or not, a hundred times more powerful than it had been. Because it's been proven now by the medical science. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That God put a bone in my leg, but it wasn't a regular bone. It's porcelain. Yes. And there's nowhere, nowhere. They done done the research. Nowhere where, where, where doctor done this. But a man up yonder, I called Dr. Jesus. And he'll give you that same. He loves you as much, maybe a little more than he loves me. And he will make you whole. You confess your sin, cast your cares upon Him, no matter what your problem is. No matter what your problem is. He is still the same Jesus that raised Lazarus from the dead. Save the woman at the well. Walked up and told a bunch of, I don't know whether I started to call them whoremongers, but I don't know what it was. They was going to stone a woman that had been caught in adultery. And Jesus said, if you not guilty to yourself, cast the first stone. If you without sin, ever slap one of them devils, walked away, dropped their stones. Because they was as guilty. She got saved and made. Uh, she's the first in the scene, Jesus. After he rose from the dead. That shows you how good Jesus is. Mary Magdalene is the real woman. They say there's going to be stone in history. Ain't that great? He appeared to her first. And you don't think he come to save the lost? Jesus said, I come to save sinners. Paul preached that Jesus come to save sinners whom he was what? Chief. That's what Paul preached. And, and it don't take all this sheer stuff to, to, to the church makes you get saved. It just takes you to accept Christ as your Savior and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and believe it in your heart. And if you've got the right kind of pastors, they'll teach you modesty and they'll teach you godliness and they won't condemn you. Right now, why don't you just raise your hands up as I ask God to forgive you of your sins. If you have any, I'm going to let, let everyone helps me there. Thank you, Jesus. I want you, I'm going to ask God to forgive you, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I ask you to blot out all sins in our midst. You're such a good God. God, there's no kind of way whatsoever that I'd be here today. There's no kind of way. Jesus, thank you. God, for bringing me back. Lord, I'm, all I know, I was going up through a dark channel up towards heaven when, when I wound up in that hospital. Thank you, Jesus. God, I know you let me be put back here for a purpose. Thank you, Lord. God, I believe there's a work to do. And I thank you, God, that 
You've kept my youth. Got the same eyes I had when you healed me. Thank you, Lord. God, I just owe you. I owe you, owe you everything. And I pray right now, look down upon all this audience. They're searching their heart right now. See if there be any sin in them. There's a backslider or a sinner. God, in your name, I remit their sins as they reach to you. Lord, I restore the backsliders as they reach to you. God, I can right now command their sins be forgiven them. Washed away by the blood of the Lamb of God. All in your name, Jesus. And for your glory. God, I fell this evening. These old heretic diseases. People think they inherited them. I don't believe it. God, I believe that the devil is going about oppressing your people with all these sicknesses. I believe all sicknesses and all diseases is the devil's doing. I believe divine healing. And you told people never heard of you. Take up their bed and walk. and Tell them go and sin no more. You didn't put them through what churches put them through. You told them they was already forgiven. Thank you, Lord. And some of these was a great ones in the Bible. God, right now we pray that all sins be remitted. Be forgiven. That not nothing, all doubt. God, we command it to be dismissed. That none but solid faith. All in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Sing this a little bit.